welcome back to Exposed. Before the break, we were, talk we were discussing the importance of arts and we're gonna continue that discussion. Uh, I had asked um, if you think there needs to be more arts incorporated into the school systems, but in addition to the school systems, do you think it, there needs to be more art programs or stuff like that available in the community, such as like, I mean, for the performing arts, you have the Turtle Island Theater Company. We have Art Co. now. Do you think, do you, do you find it like those two things satisfy, well, I don't want to say satisfy, but kind of like, well, yeah, satisfy like your all your interest in terms of like, because arts is like such a broad spectrum of things. And I think there's certainly room for much more mm -hmm. uh, extracurricular programs, such as like Turtle Island and Art Co. and things like that. And I also think that they're a lot more successful than they are in school um, because every time, you know, Turtle Island has a show, it's great. Like for, for the younger kids, the, the parents love those shows and, you know, uh, the teenagers love doing the shows, the musical entertainers love doing the shows. Uh, I'm sure, as you said, Art Co. was successful or, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then... Yeah. You know, there was a pilot program for, for guitar lessons and it's really people are just are just starting to realize how much they want art in this community, I think. And I think it's going to take off soon. And I, I think it's actually more successful with extracurricular activity, uh, programs than it is in school because you know, the kids can choose, oh, this is what I want to do. I'm just going to go there and do that, you know, and I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I think they're, especially with music, because... I know the theater, like they do like musicals and singing and, but in terms of like playing instruments and stuff like that, I hope there's more of it because when I was in high school, I was such a band geek <laughs> and like I did all the extracurricular like activities that the school offered in terms of music, but I didn't, and I also did it at Dawson too, <laughs> but I didn't have any, like there was nothing really in Gunawage that mm -hmm. you can also like tie like culturally which that's I think the benefit of when it's offered in Gunawage is that there's always there's always like some sort of connection to our culture and yeah I, I think that's I think especially that you just said that you know you were I guess you did concert band or something right in Dawson or uh, or in high school right. flautist but and and, and it's kind of like <laughs> it's almost like who hasn't done like something I mean you know some people haven't but like so many people have done that in high school and they're like yeah I played clarinet and don't you just wish that like all those people would just like get together in town and be like, we all play clarinet. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, that kind of brings a point around to the fact that there are people in town that say, well, you know, I paint too. And uh, like people just kind of come out of the woodwork sometimes and they say, yeah, I know how to paint. And they actually have works of art that they kind of keep hidden under a bushel. And um, like there's a lot of like closeted artists in Gunawage. Yeah. I, I think... Um, one thing that I would like to see in Gahnawaga I think would be very uh, beneficial would be some kind of really, really simple art gallery, like a small space with four white walls, because uh, then you could show these, um, these visual artists in a more um, adequate space, mm -hmm. like, a, like a real, real gallery setting. And it doesn't even have to be uh, that, that elaborate. And it also would be able to like encourage things like group shows, like let's say there's a theme and then there's several artists from Ganawage that all display like their different sort of yeah, interpretation. Amazing. Actually with uh, Art Co, what Sandra and I are planning is once this pilot program that we're starting gets a little more successful and we're able to pull in more money from different grants, we wanted to actually do that to find a permanent facility to teach that because we were teaching at the youth center and recently in the library. So we wanted to find our own permanent space and also be able to double it as a studio and have certain hours where artists can just go there to work if they don't want to work in you know, their living room next to the TV and a barking dog. Mm -hmm. They can just be in this, in this white room and have inspiration and I think Art has this wonderful way of bringing people together and creating a community and just having this collective thought because there's so much creativity that you all become in tuned to each other. So it's like this really mm -hmm. amazing thing that happens and group exhibitions. I've lived it firsthand, be, so I know what you yeah, mean. Yeah, exactly. It'd be great. A contemporary <laughs> gallery, 
I don't know how the logistics of it would be to run, but I imagine it'd be totally doable. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, what would be interesting would be to see the subject matter that people paint in Gahnawaga because there is like a very large trend towards a lot of traditional sort of motifs, which are very interesting, but it would be also nice to see people who take those sort of traditional ideas and, mm -hmm. and create sort of um, other visual ways of expressing mm -hmm. their indigenous Mohawk identity. A lot of my art that I do currently revolves around that idea of taking traditional ideas and traditional symbolism and kind of twisting it in a way that reflects myself as an Aboriginal person and someone who participates in the Canadian society, quote unquote. And, and yeah, so a lot of it tries to incorporate, you know, who myself as a collective people is and who I am right now in this moment in time. And the things that come out are really interesting. And I brought this idea to children too, and just trying to see what their interpretation of being native is and just being yourself, which has like, it's, it's really interesting what the kids can come up with and anybody can come up with. And it's just providing the, sp the space, the inspiration, the motivation, I think would be really, really good for this community. Going back to what you said about just wanting to have like a, you know, a permanent space is when I had talked to um, Marion about the Oyaks. She had said one of the reasons why I think it kind of, why they had difficulty like moving on into the future <laughs> was because it was only a summer thing. So every kind of summer they'd have to find a new location for it because they couldn't keep up. Uh... Well, after she left, I ended up taking the reins and I was 16 years old. I did not know what I was doing. I remember getting the Brighter Futures grant and not knowing what to do. Wait, I take that back. I didn't get it. I didn't get it because I wrote <laughs> the application. I, I, I scribbled the application out and sent it to them. I just wanted to do it but I, I didn't know how to write applications. And then, so that year happened. what 16-year-old does. <laughs> right, so that year, like, barely, had, like, we, we managed to pull it off, like, somehow, don't even ask me how. And then the next year we tried again, and I was running it out of my grandfather's house, and we had, it had just, like, completely fizzled out because I, I was just, like, I was too young. Like, I, I wasn't yeah. able to take, I wanted to so bad, and I was trying, but I couldn't. I couldn't take it on and eventually it fell through. So well, that, that's something like a permanent location that even the theater was having troubles with or still is having troubles with. I mean, we saw the theater close in November mm -hmm. and then there was stuff about not knowing who was building his own and by and it's just like a lot of these programs don't have like a permanent home to I think to um, a multidisciplinary art center in the future is probably the answer that's the best idea for sure I think so. and <laughs> but it's a long we're all like now. yeah but but that's a what do you think the reality is about something like that actually going to happen in a community like this well i think something like that has been talked about for has, many yeah. many years by different people and i think that if we were to start, you know, let's say hypothetically the four of us were to start that right now in this moment in time, and I think it would just be finding out how to do it. And that's the stage we're in right now is finding out how to do it, where to get the money from, mm -hmm. and then go from there. Because we're thinking about the bigger picture, which is really important, but it's also important to look at the little steps to get there mm -hmm. and map that out before we start thinking about it's going to go right here with a nice little mm -hmm. roof and... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I do know we're not the only really, we're not really not the only ones that are wanting to do this either. Like I know my cousin Oizogun Pauline Lahash is an artist and she also has been working towards making something like this happen. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people, especially artists that Definitely. have been holed up in their living room making work, <laughs> wishing that they had a big place to do it, you know? And so, I mean, even, I, don't, I wouldn't call myself an artist, but communications and devil and uh, animation and it's totally creative though <laughs> yeah it's it's definitely creative and it's just like now like I wish I had there was something that I could you know physically go to or like I don't know to I, I don't I don't even know how to describe like you want, it you want atmosphere you know you want like 
facilities and like accessibility and just like you know something it's like encouraging yeah. too and I think in terms of like programming services I wish it was like I had some of the stuff that they have now when I was younger in school or you yeah. know just like growing up in high school and stuff like that and I, that I wish what we have now doesn't ever get you know cut through funding mm -hmm. but just grows more so that you know our future generations have like even more opportunity in terms of the arts well it seems like we're talking a lot about places and spaces and houses and facilities but i think what we're forgetting is also how important it is to have the actual people who influence you as a young person mm -hmm. like um i mean going who was my going who marion was like one of my greatest influences and actually brought me out of myself and showed me that there was a way for me to be who I was and express myself. And um, if there was some kind of multidisciplinary art center, or uh, there doesn't even have to be, you know, if we could have some sort of program where we invite, you know, artists and, and curators and, and people who like really know what they're talking about to come in and inspire. Um, kids and young people to continue what they're doing. Uh, actually, in Deoyux, um, Guanohu had a bunch of her Concordia friends who are probably my age now, but they would come to Gunawage and they were like, you know, like punks and filmmakers and weirdos, but <laughs> they were being themselves and they were showing that you're able to just follow your passion and be whoever you want. And, and for a 15 year old, that's like a really, really heavy thing to realize, but in a good way. So uh, would we all agree that arts are important? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for coming on the show. Unfortunately, this, we're running out of time, or well, we ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have any comments or questions, you can email them to mohawktv at hotmail.com, or you can give us a call at 450-632-6397. You can also join our Facebook group and uh, don't forget to check out all of the latest episodes of Exposed on MohawkTV.ca. Uh, thanks for joining and see you again in two weeks. Anna. <laughs>